Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say the iPhone 14 Pro line is a bad device. Hey guys, it's Ryan and welcome back to another video. So it's been just over a year since I got my hands on the 13 Pro Max and I still think it's one of the best smartphones you can buy today. Although it may not be Apple's top tier phone anymore, but the 13 Pro Max still remains a strong choice. It has currently been replaced in the 2022 lineup by the iPhone 14 Pro Max and it is not officially sold by Apple anymore. However, given that it's only a year old, it still is an excellent device with plenty to offer. One of the biggest upgrades on this phone is the 120Hz refresh rate. This makes actions like swiping through home screens and opening apps feel much smoother. A 120Hz refresh rate is great, but not all the time, which is why Apple used an adaptive LTPO panel. This enables it to move between refresh rates depending on the task at hand. This is what Apple calls ProMotion and the way it works is by adjusting the refresh rate. So if you're doing something where 120Hz is likely to make a visible difference such as scrolling through Instagram or gaming, the panel will aim to adjust for that. However, if you're watching an online video, most of which are shot at 30 frames per second, the screen will slow down to accommodate it. It can even go as low as 10Hz in activities such as reading. ProMotion is a real step forward and I noticed it immediately. I feel like once you've used a 120Hz display, there really is no going back. A feature that is missing here that you'll find on the iPhone 14 Pro line is the always on display, but I wouldn't say it's a reason to pay loads more money for the newer phone. At 6.7 inches, the screen here is ideal for content, reading, watching Netflix, gaming, or even editing videos. The OLED panel is bright and readable outdoors, the notch will still irritate some, but for me personally, it has never bothered me. Watching a movie on Netflix in HDR certainly looks amazing with the right amount of clarity. The blacks are perfect, the colours are natural and the extra brightness truly comes to life in scenes with bright light and explosions. So for me, the screen is absolutely amazing. When it comes to the design of this phone, I really like the squared off edges. In the back, it has a clean matte finish. The screen is covered with a ceramic shield, but I would always recommend you put on a screen protector to stay on the safe side. Though I must say, it is a fairly heavy phone to carry around, but you will get used to it over time. But as great as this phone looks, there is one irritating aspect. The stainless steel sides pick up smudges very easily, so I do find myself constantly wiping them down to remove any fingerprints. The iPhone 13 Pro Max also packs an impressive camera system. The three protruding camera lenses consist of a 12 megapixel wide sensor with an f1.5 lens along with a 12 megapixel f1.8 ultra wide with a 120 degree field of view. The set is completed by a 12 megapixel 77 mm telephoto lens capable of 3 times optical zoom. There's also a LiDAR sensor to help with low light portrait. That 12 megapixel wide camera allows more light into the sensor for better low light performance and a more natural depth of field effect. The benefit of both of these becomes clear when shooting at night, where pictures are clear and detailed without as much reliance on the night mode feature. As you can see, the detail is fairly good and the colours are nice. There's also none of the overly bright areas often seen on night mode shots. There are still bouts of the odd lens flare when shooting at night, which can certainly be annoying. The ultra wide lens can utilise night mode for some striking low light landscapes, and it can also be used for macro mode, which enables every time you get close to something. I would say it's pretty good if you would like to spice up your Instagram feed with some macro photography. The video on this phone is also really good, and it can record up to 4K at 60 frames per second. And you also have cinematic mode for some cool cinematic shots. For the pros, there's Pro Raw, which is Apple's take on the raw format. Pro Raw is great and I often switch it on when I have time to really set up a photo and spend a bit of time editing it afterwards. The raw format holds much more data and allows much more control when it comes to the edit, but it also keeps all that computational goodness achieved by Deep Fusion and Smart HDR. What's Less Pro is the cinematic mode, which is a video portrait mode that focuses on an object while blurring the background to give that cinematic look. What's cool about this feature is that you can edit your focus point after you have filmed the footage, but I still think it needs some work. Shooting video on this phone is super clean, especially during the day. I even record some clips on it that I include on my YouTube channel. But overall, the camera on this phone is fairly good. Now, when it comes to performance, I would say the 13 Pro Max is a very capable device. Although the iPhone 14 Pro line has the A16 Bionic chip, 
which of course is better. But for the past five to six years, performance has been consistent across devices. There's just been some small unnoticeable increases from year to year. The only way you can really notice a difference in the speed and overall performance is if you compare it to the iPhone 6 for example. Gaming on this phone is super smooth thanks to its powerful processor and ProMotion display. Especially when maxing out the settings on Call of Duty, you can really see how smooth it is. With the 13 Pro Max you get 6GB of RAM, I was able to access and switch between apps without experiencing any lag. Overall, I would say the A15 Bionic chip in this phone is an absolute powerhouse. Now, the battery life was definitely one of the main reasons I got my hands on this phone. It has been able to consistently get me through the whole day when carrying out activities such as web browsing, going through social media, emails and watching YouTube for quite a huge chunk of my day. But if you are going to be streaming HDR content and gaming, then you're likely to drain the battery much quicker. My workflow is mainly based around social media, emails and making notes on Notion and it hasn't let me down so far. I think the 13 Pro Max still remains an excellent phone even with the new devices released this year. I would say it's not too far off in terms of camera and performance in comparison to the iPhone 14 series. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say the iPhone 14 Pro line is a bad device. In fact, the Dynamic Island is absolutely amazing and I love it but I just don't think it's worth paying that much for such minor upgrades if you already have the 13 Pro Max. Also, if you're thinking of getting the iPhone 14 Plus, please don't do that. It's literally a clone of the 13 Pro Max, except it has a 60Hz display, a slightly better battery and action mode. I actually dropped an in-depth review of the 14 Plus and compared it to my 13 Pro Max. So if you guys want to check out that video, then I will leave a link in the description below. If you're still deciding whether you should purchase the iPhone 14 Pro, then I would suggest you wait a little longer because with the holiday sales right around the corner, the 13 Pro Max is most likely going to drop in price. So do keep your eyes peeled. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. I've been Ryan and I will speak to you guys soon, take care.